Hi, my name is Adolf Lombardi. I'm an orthopedic surgeon practicing in Columbus, Ohio, in the area of adult reconstruction of the hip and knee. I've been in practice here in Columbus since uh, 1987, and I've had the opportunity to do uh, well this week. I hit 35,000 total joints, uh, hip and knee replacements and re revision work. Um, I'm still actively practicing and having a great time at it. Do you consider potential metal sensitization an important issue to discuss pre- or post-operatively with your patients? The question of metal sensitization uh, comes up frequently in uh, my pre-operative dialogue with my patients. It probably uh, came more and more into those discussions as I transitioned uh, mid-career into doing uh, a lot of metal on metal total hip arthroplasties. I was obviously very concerned at that time uh, to get the background from the patients if they had any concerns regarding metal sensitization. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a year's worth of uh, patients um, that we asked the question, have you had a reaction to metals? And so over that year, I was probably more like a year and a half, we interviewed uh, 12,500 patients asking this question, have them fill out a form. And interestingly enough, it was about 5.4% of the patients that admitted that they had some metal issues. Interestingly, it was 6% uh, of women and only half a percent of men. When I do ask that question, then I've got to make a decision as to how I'm going to treat that patient. Am I going to use a device that um, might uh, create an adverse reaction? Interesting enough, 98% of the patients identified that nickel was the metal that they were reacting to. And we're well aware of the fact that chrome cobalt has uh, some nickel in it and that patients can be sensitized to that. And, um, you know, so those patients, if it's a hip, you know, you use a ceramic head, um, a titanium stem, a titanium acetabular component. You can really stay out of the uh, uh, chrome cobalt and be quote unquote nickel free. Uh, in the knee, it's more difficult. And so I started recommending to patients uh, that they get uh, the lymphocytic transformation assay. As a matter of fact, is today alone, I had two patients come in uh, that are that quoted that they were sensitive to nickel. And one patient I was considering to do a partial knee replacement. Now she had skin testing done, and I tried to explain to her that that doesn't always correlate, and that if we really wanted to proceed with a partial knee replacement, I felt she should have a lymphocytic transformation assay, uh, and that uh, that way we could decide if we we're gonna do a partial knee. Because in my mind, uh, the best partial knee that I do is chrome cobalt. How has orthopedic analysis metal LTT testing helped patient outcomes in your practice? Well, the LTT testing has been very uh, helpful to me. I'm gonna give you uh, two patient examples that come to mind. I had a patient come to me and um, she was a physician and she was very, very concerned about metal allergy. And of course she had gone ahead and done some skin testing. And I went on to explain to her that I didn't really feel that that was the most appropriate way to do this, that we should do uh, the lymphocytic transformation assay uh, and that uh, uh, that would be the most appropriate way to handle the situation. She had done a little research and came in thinking that she might have uh, go for a uh, nickel-free implant uh, with a certain company. Um, and um, fortunately, I sent her for the testing because the testing revealed that she was sensitive to that alternative material that I was going to use. And so I wound up using an ion implanted titanium device uh, in this patient um, because she was sensitive to this alternative metal that was present in the other implant. And then there was another patient that I elected to test and I tested them when they first came to me. And at that point I had put in an ion implanted uh, titanium device and uh, this was a revision. And then the patient came back to me 13 years later and I was thinking about doing an alternative uh, metal rather than the titanium. And I did the LTT testing preoperatively and he was also sensitive to that particular metal. So fortunately for me, I stayed with the uh, ion implanted titanium. So I think those are two concrete examples. Uh, I think there are other examples where I've helped patients who have come to me, uh, you know, 
Metal allergy is a diagnosis of exclusion. We've gone through the whole infection workup, instability workup, uh, you know, you do CT scans, etc., and nothing shows up. And then you do this test, and they're sensitive to nickel or chromium, chromium or cobalt. So they're very thankful when you change the implant to a, a something alternative. And for me, it's been in, in a knee, it's been an ion implanted titanium implant. Which patient should consider metal sensitivity testing? When you're evaluating a patient preoperatively and you discuss with them, if you'd like to discuss with them, metal sensitivity, I think you want to try to get the history of what are they sensitive to. If the patient tells you, uh, in my mind, that they have ha had issues with piercings uh, and they have react reactivity uh, to high nickel content implants, you may want to go ahead before you put in a chrome cobalt device and do the uh, LTT test. That for me is, uh, is the patient I indicate that on. Now it's the other patient, the patient who's already had an implant and who comes to you complaining of pain, swelling, a um, little bit of heat around their knee. Uh, you know, they've been worked up by previous surgeons for infection, etc. I then would go ahead and work them up for infection as well and look at the implants, look at work them up for loosening, evaluated all those issues. And then I would have a LTT test to uh, confirm or deny that they're uh, some, somewhat sensitized to nickel, chromium, cobalt, um, and then uh, show them that information. And uh, I do do a revision. So I am a believer, and I, we know there are some of my colleagues out there who don't believe. I, I've had uh, success in revising patients um, to these alternative devices. And I've written about these alternative devices, uh, specifically the ion implant and needs that I've done, and we have had great success. I've not had any catastrophic failure with this implant. Several manufacturers are doing it, so it is there and it is available. And uh, I would recommend to my colleagues, if you've got one of those patients who just can't figure out why they're having a problem, maybe give this test a try um, and maybe it'll give you the answer.